Hey guys, here's a quick look at the new mainframe upgrade for the Nano CPX. So I picked this up from uh, RKH, this is Rack on Heli, ordered it directly from their website. This is their advanced mainframe with the optional tail boom support. Now depending on what frame you get, you can get just a frame only or you can get it with the optional tail boom support which gives it that uh, bigger look in the heli. So let me open it up and show you guys uh, what's inside. So opening up the uh, package. Also, this frame is available in red or silver. I like silver a lot, so silver is a very big plus. It's a uh, staple, pretty good. So let me put some of these staples down. Got some more staples over here. I guess they don't want to make sure, or they want to make sure all of these packages and bags stays, you know, the same. So let's start with the main frame. All right, let's see what we have here. How nice this frame looks. Uh, according to uh, Rack on Heli's uh, website. The mainframe, you can use both the stock motor or the optional or aftermarket uh, brushes motor, the HP 3 se I think. That's what I'm using here on my brushes one. I got it from uh, Astro Designs. So here's a close look at the frame. So sometimes the silver might be a little bit hard to see on the camera, but I'm going to try my best to give you guys a uh, 360 shot. You can see aluminum with some uh, carbon fiber. Uh, rods right here. I think they're carbon fiber. Either carbon fiber or metal. I'm pretty sure they're carbon fiber, but yep. Front, one in the front and two in the rear. Very, very nice. Looks cool. Let's see. It's a little bit heavier than stock, but it's not too bad at all. Oh, one thing that caught my attention on the Rack on Heli's website was the motor mount is adjustable. You can see the screw right over here. Give you guys a shot on the top. You can see when you mount either the stock motor or the aftermarket brushes motor, it clamps down to the motor. And then you have two more screws, one here and one over here. And you can slide it back and forth depending on what size pinion you use. So if you're using like a wild uh, brushes motor, you might want to run a smaller pinion so you can slide the, mo you know, the motor back to get that perfect gear mesh. You can see here, very nice. Uh, I believe this frame... There's two different ways to mount the tail boom. You can use the stock 2mm, or I think it comes with an optional 3mm too, which I'm going to uh, check out later in the package. But I think you can fit, or I think if you remove the insert right here, you can fit a 3mm uh, tail boom, which is going to be that solid 3mm tail boom. So it's not never going to break, which is a very good thing. As you can see, we got the canopy post, they uh, side right here. So I guess if you crash hard enough, instead of bending the frame, I think these would just pop off, so let me try to pull it off for you guys, yep. They actually uh, screw off, so that's very cool. You can see a little bit of thread right here. So most likely when you crash, these would just pop off and you just gotta screw it back in, so that's very cool. So let's open up the next bag. I'll show you guys what's hiding in this one. So I, I noticed a few things when I was looking at it earlier. There's servo mounts, if you're using the optional brushes motor, the Outrunner brushes motors. So let's see. Ooh, a lot of little bags up in here. <laughs> so let's take out the manual too. Because some people like to see, you know, the manual. Alright, so I'm going to do the manual later. Put these bags over here. So first off, we have a bag of a whole bunch of little screws to mount the frame. I see there's one small one and... Or two small... They're, they're very small, but some are long and some are short. So make sure you read the manual to see where all the screws go. Let's see, up next we have, ooh, anti-rotation brackets. So you, you get two anti-rotation brackets in the pin. You have one that's, I think it's made out of Durin, and one that's carbon fiber. So depending on what you want to use, hey, you have all. It's a win-win. And you also get these little spacers. So when you're using the aftermarket brushless motor, it's the outrunner. So it's, it's going to be a bigger diameter than the stock motor. So what these spacers do is they space the servos out farther to give you more uh, clearance between the motor and the servo. Up next, we have here is the tail boom support. Very cool. Let's see. So, I'm going to leave these small screws and uh, um, tail boom support uh, mount right here in the bag so that way I don't lose it. But you can see, tail boom support is very, very light. You know, it's not too stiff, but it should be strong enough for this size helicopter because look at this thing. It's as big as my hand. So, I'll just give you guys a quick visual. Here we go. They'll probably mount down here and they'll probably go back here. And look how nice this looks, guys. That just looks sweet, doesn't it? Look at that. Looks like a bigger helicopter already. So, yep. 
And uh, stay tuned, guys. Well, actually, I'll just keep it in the same video. I'll just uh, assemble it and show you guys how the Nano looks assembled onto the RKH Advanced Frame. So st uh, just hold up, guys. All right, so uh, here I am. I took apart the brushless motor from the frame. So uh, I pretty much trashed my old frame because all the parts were CA'd on. And I had to break everything loose to get to the motor because the mo if you want to use the HPO uh, 3 motor, you would still have to use the included uh, insert that comes with the motor because if you don't use the insert, the diameter of the mount is too big. So you have to use the insert that comes with the motor. And pretty much you can see here, once you put the, ins uh, the mount on there, it clamps down onto that plastic insert. And it's a very, very secure fit. So one tip when you guys are building it, use Loctite because the last thing you want is screws to back off so I'm gonna continue to keep on building and uh, yep alright so it took quite a while to get this frame together hardest part was getting all of the small spacers for the brushless motor and the small screws on so I used my help or I used the help of some tweezers and the very very small Phillips screwdriver uh, a tip for you guys is you might want to take a piece of magnet and kind of magnetize the tip so that way when you put the small screw on there, it sticks on the tip. If not, when you put the screw on there, it keeps on falling off. So when you magnetize the tip, it's a little bit easier to install so many small screws. And <laughs> I'm just saying, guys, these screws are very tiny. But you can see here it is installed. I still need to install the swash uh, links that goes from the swash plate to the servos, but I'll do that later because I'm going to end up upgrading the head, the swash, the hub, and the main grips in the f in the uh, next video. So I'll just leave it off for now. As you can see, I'll be using the rear anti-rotation bracket, the carbon fiber one. It also comes with the deal ring, but I won't be using the plastic one. I'll just use the carbon fiber because why? Carbon fiber and aluminum, what more can you ask for? Uh, let's see, oh, let me take off the landing gear. So we're, the one I have right here mounted is the MCPX. Uh, this frame, you can uh, use either the stock landing gears or the MCPX or even the RKH upgraded uh, landing gear because there's actually two holes on there. So no matter which landing gear you use, you can just unscrew it and move it back or move it forward. So that's very easy. And also the landing gears attached by a screw. So when you put the skids on there, you screw it down. The skids don't fall off on you. Let's see, tail boom support. Very nice. Let me focus. I think it's out of focus at the moment. But I'm using the plastic spacer inside if you're gonna, because I'm using the 2mm tail boom. But when I switch to the 3mm, just remove the insert and you can fit a 3mm in there. So it's very nice, very clean. The spacers that they include for the servo is uh, very good, very uh, nice looking. Good clearance between the motor and the servo. One thing that this uh, frame didn't include was the two washers when you mount the board. So... Make sure you don't throw away those uh, old screws that you used to mount the board. Keep those uh, plastic spacers. Let's see what's up next. Oh, also the manual. So, the manual is uh, very easy to read. You can see starting from the top to bottom, it tells you how to mount it. You got one side for the brush, one side for the brushless. If you follow the instructions, you really can't go wrong. So, it's very simple. Flip to the back side. It goes on how to mount the rear servo. And once again, brushed and brushless, and it tells you over here where to mount, how to mount the uh, front uh, landing gear uh, poster pin or mount forward or back. You can see tail boom support, uh, tail boom insert for two millimeter or three millimeter, and it says tight the screw to clamp down the tail boom. Uh, make sure that you guys use Loctite when on any screws that go into metal, use Loctite because you want to be safe because these are small little screws and they will back off on you over time. You can see, that's pretty much it. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next video, which I'll be installing the whole complete upgrade head. And once again, guys, thanks for watching.